Hello, my name is Christopher McCabe, and I am a field application engineer at Unitronics. This is the Power HMI webinar. I invite anyone who has questions to please enter them in the chat, and I will be glad to answer them after the presentation. The HMI, or better known as the Human Machine Interface, is the touchscreen portion of the controller that you would interact with with the machine to send out the commands to the process. Unitronics offers four different types of controllers, starting with the Jazz series, you have the Samba series, the Vision, and the Unistream, which is our most current line offered. The Jazz series HMI has a two-line textual screen. It offers up to 16 functional keys with up to 10 user label keys as well. It does have capability for multiple languages and it can support up to 60 user defined screens. The Samba series HMI is offered in three different sizes. We have a 3.5 inch, 4.3 and a seven inch touch screen. When using numeric values, this series offers a virtual keypad for data entry that will pop up on the screen to allow you to manually enter in the value that you need and then you can select return and that will update on a live basis. Each of these screens have a high resolution with a full color touch screen. This type of controller is offered with multi languages and there are built-in alarm screens as well. The Vision Series HMI has two different types of HMI. Uh, the first one we will talk about is the Standard Series HMI. This is the V130 controller. Uh, is a monochrome 2.4 inch LCD screen. It offers up to 20 functional keys and you do have the option to add 10 user label keys as well. It does offer multi-languages for this display and there are also built-in alarm screens as well. The other type of Vision Series HMI that we offer is the Enhanced Series Controller. They are offered in six different screens. Uh, we have them in the 3.5 inch, 4.3, 5.7, 7 inch, 10.4 inch, and 12.1. The models, the V350, V430, and V560 offer user-defined function keys at the bottom of the screen, where all the other models, they are strictly just touchscreen type controllers with a virtual keypad. All these controllers offer high quality color touchscreen, they do have the option for multi-languages as well, and they do have built-in alarm screens. Uh, one of the nice features about the Vision is it can do trends uh, for graphs and meters. And like I mentioned before, there is the option for the virtual keypad on any other controllers that don't have the function keys. And I do believe the V350, uh, 430, and 560 will still offer this keypad those functional keys, I believe there's five of them at the bottom controller if you needed to do something specific. Our newest series HMI is the Unistream. We have three different lines for this type of controller. The first one I will talk about is the modular series. Uh, this is a type of controller that has the HMI on the front and the CPU is on the back of the controller. It is offered in three different sizes. We have a seven inch, 10.4 inch, and 15.6 inch type screen. Uh, each controller here has a high quality color touchscreen. The 10.4 inch uh, model is also offered in a multi capacitant five finger touch option in case customers would like that. Our next type of controller that we offer for the Unistream is the built in series. This is offered in three different sizes uh, the five inch, seven inch, and our newest within the last year is a 10.1 inch controller HMI. Combo. These offer high quality color touch screens as well. And so the last option is we do offer a faceless 
PLC controller. And with that, we have the option of an HMI VNC screen, which is the USL model. And HMI screens are offered in four different sizes. It is the five inch, seven inch, 10.1 inch, and 15.6 inch screen for this type of controller. Uh, it does come with a high quality color touch screen as well. So some of the features for the Unistream series includes uh, a virtual keypad for data inputs. That way you can adjust values without having to push functional keys. Uh, it does offer multi-languages uh, for the displays in case if your operator or technician, you know, reads in Spanish, Italian, or French. Uh, so it's a little bit more user-friendly and that it does have the built-in alarm screens as well. What's new to the Unistream is that it does support media as far as video, audio, and PDF viewer. There are multi-level password protection with this. Lock out some of the back uh, safe mode, info mode screens and uni apps. Uh, you can also have the option for user access controls to limit, you know, maybe someone between an administrator and an operator. Some pages you might not want someone to adjust or touch. You can lock those out and all they would have to do is just be given a username and password. So there's a lot of password protection on these controllers now. Um, same thing with uploading. You can set a password that way no one can upload from the controller without that password. These controllers do support trend graphs and meters. And so here are some of the uh, functions that we will show and can show on the actual screen. There's options for user controls. You have your basic elements like text boxes, numeric boxes. You can do a binary image. This is a light when it's in the on position, time and date options. Uh, and then you can also put a timer so you can see it counting down on the screen as well. Uh, here we'll talk about some more features we have are the graphs and meters you can put in a meter on screen, a linear radial gauge. Uh, this is a picture of our trend graphs. We offer three different types of trends. You have a basic trend with a data sampler, an X, Y coordinate trend with a data sampler, or you can uh, take in live data with a live trend and you don't necessarily need to use the data sampler for this one. And then the next picture here is a data table. So this is a nice widget that you can put on screen. You set up your data table and it will show live values as it comes across in case if you're trying to retain or look at different values over the course of a day or week. So that part's nice. Some more of our features are we do offer schedules. This would be the widget for uh, the picture shown here for the video. And the PDF viewer would take up the entire screen uh, when you use that widget. Uh, the next picture here shows the alarm history widget. There's this one and the alarm status viewer. So these are some of our management tools here. The alarms are very useful for maintenance, performance issues, um, or if something's going wrong, this is going to tell you. And so you can set these based upon how severe that alarm should be. You can set it to a warning, minor, major, critical, and then you can say, is this a low warning, high warning, things like that. So that way it kind of gives a little bit more importance and then and based upon what it is that comes across that screen, it might say, well, you know, warning low can be taken care of in 24 hours. Critical high might need to be taken within the next four hours before something major happens. So it's a little bit of flexibility with this. Uh, we do offer widgets for SD browser, file selector browser, web server, password management. And then now we have a new widget for the email configurator. And basically you would select each box and then input where it's going email, things like that. So a lot of functionality here with this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to demo a application that we have with the Unistream just to give you an idea of what some of these functions can be done on the screen. And then I will do a setup here using Unilogic and a modular seven inch controller to showcase how some of these things get put onto the screen itself. So I'm going to open up a tight VNC viewer here on my screen. We'll go ahead and go back to the main screen here and just kind of show you a couple things like here we have the gauges. Here you can see the radio gauge going. There's a couple different aesthetic properties so if you don't want to circ the radio gauge you can obviously do this guy right here. So there's a few options between uh, what you would like to see. You have the linear gauges down here either in the vertical position or the horizontal. Uh, so there's a little bit of functionality that way you're not stuck with just one type. Um, so that part is nice as well. 
Uh, I mentioned the languages. We deal with customers throughout the world, so it is nice. You know, we offer languages in Chinese, Russian, English, Spanish, Italian, so it does give you a little bit more flexibility for using the controller. The video really only works in the Pro versions only. This is the B10 models, C10 models, anything from B5, 5, and down. It will not support the video viewer. I can show you the PDF viewer as well. File not found, uh, we would need to import, but basically it would take up the entire screen. Oh, here's the alarms. So this is nice. So say you have your system running here, something is going on. We can go to the alarm status viewer. We can go to the alarm and these would be our alarms here. But the alarm summary would tell us, you know, what has gone off, you know, maybe in the last hour or two, you know, that way we can take a look and it's what do we need to do? This is something high on. We would need to acknowledge it. So we'd have to click on it. Acknowledge. I think it's actually acknowledge. Okay. And then it turns it back on. So yeah, there's a little bit of functionality that way you can monitor what's going on with the alarms here. We'll go back to the main menu. I will show you our data sampler. This works well for the trends. So I'll sit here and demo live trends that is running. So basically you have the option of you know using sine wave lines that'll plot. Just depends upon what kind of data you're taking in. The one thing I will note is that you do need to have a start and stop sampler button if you're using the XY trend or the regular trend. And I even believe for the live. So it's something that's not shown here. When I go ahead and click stop, that stop button that would be down here below the trend would actually trigger the trend to go ahead and reset and recycle. So that way, when I push the run button, you'll start seeing the data plot on the trend itself. You don't have that button, start and stop will not do anything. I will show you that later in the demo. That's the main thing that we I have found that works well with this, just to start and end the sampler to collect the data. Last thing I will show you, this is uh, pretty cool, the system simulation. And so this is live, show what, when we turn the system on, you can see how the tank fills up. All this is coming across. So you are able to showcase your screens like this with different JPEG, GIFs, files like that based upon it working with these ranges. It shows two bottles being sent out. And then this would be the next step, station three and 11. So this is used for packaging, things like that, just to showcase and let people know kind of what it can do there. It's probably four to five times amount screens than what I showed on the Jazz. So it's, it's endless possibilities that you can create with these screens for whatever customization that you're going to need or want to set up and see based upon your company, company logos, things like that. So it gives you a lot of free range to customize the HMIs. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and open up Unilogic software. I will be doing this, demoing this with the version 1.32.98 of Unilogic. I'll go ahead and wait for that to load up first and then I'll go ahead and bring it into the screen. All right, so. Go ahead and maximize this for you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and select a new project. I'll go ahead and name it Power of HMI Webinar. Go ahead and select next. You always need to select what type of hardware you are using. I'm using a seven inch monitor, so I'm gonna select that, select finish, and that will load up the program. So this is a blank program. What I always like to say first is it's best to always set up your PLC communications, especially if you're using ethernet to connect with. So you would go here to the PLC communication tab in the solution explorer, drop down that menu, drop down the physical tab, select the panel ethernet. Over here on the right, we have our properties windows. You would go ahead and enter in your configuration of your IP address subnet mask and default gateway. And so once you have that all set up, one other thing I'll make mention of is if you scroll down here to the password management, you wanna make sure this VNC server working mode is have changed to either enabled strong password or enabled no password. And this will allow you to VNC to the controller. It'll also allow me to show uh, everyone how what I'm doing on the actual HMI screen. And that way you can see it here being demoed. Go ahead and select OK. This is just saying that it's VNC, but there's no password, so just be careful, you know, but they would still need your IP address to get into the VNC. So, all right, so we're going to go ahead and select now, uh, now that that's set, 
the screen one under module one for the HMI. And so I'll show you a couple things real quick. Basic, simple elements that we have. We do rectangles, go ahead and put a box in here. Change the aesthetics here in the background. If I wanna make it, you know, say green-ish right there, you can adjust the height, size, position, all things like that. Thickness of the border. And same idea with the button. We'll go ahead and throw a button here on the screen. With the buttons, you have what are called actions here. And so you, you would have to select these three buttons here. And this is an add a new action. And you can see that there's a set bit. We can go ahead and create a tag as um, button one. And so this trigger is going to, when we press it, it will set it. We need to go ahead and add another action. This will be a reset bit. And so what this does, and your trigger will need to be release, it's kind of like uh, pushing a doorbell. When you push the doorbell and you hold it, the noise keeps going. When you let go, it turns off. And so that's what this is. It's a two-part combination. You have to have the set to push it and the reset to release it, and that'll function kind of like just a one-time push and trigger. You have options to tag enable visibility by turning on something to allow it to become visible on the screen. And same idea, you can change uh, the text label here from button one to start slash stop. Uh, and it'll update it live when you click off of it. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure that spelling is correct. Click on it again. And so there's all the options that you can select from in the properties windows for each widget itself. All right, so moving on, we can, uh, I'll do some of the user controls that I showcased, the radio button screw. Looks like you would need to select the options list. Okay, so these have a list of text, basically that if you, we can add a couple different options. We can say um, stop, warning, and this one will be go. And so then you can configure in this, for instance, if you wanted to set a value, so say if zero came across it would do stop if it was one we'd get a warning two would be go so you can set that up based upon those values that were done here this is how everything was set up to the number value when you're doing your ladder oh one important thing too is i'll go back to this anytime you see anything that's in red with empty you need to set a tag to it or you download or you'll get an error when trying to download to the controller. Anything in green is not necessary to stop the download. But you can, you do have the option to add in a tag and associate it with a, you know, an integer tag or a bit tag as well. And so I did mention that we do have text elements. This is usually the text is very nice, especially if you know say something and we can just say, you know, put in power of the HMI. Go ahead and click off that. And so maybe you might want to put a title in here. So we can go ahead and take this guy, put it up here in the middle. And then if you go down to this text font box here, go ahead and click the three dots. You'll be given options for the different sizes, whether you want it bold, underlined, things like that, different colors. Say we want to make this, uh, we'll make it red. That way people see it and there's different options for text you know a few options here if you want to you know use this one uh, i think the default is bitstream a numeric box you can put on screen same idea you need to link the tag we can go ahead and say value and then click the format here this will give you some options based upon what you want to see uh, decimal point you can select one if you're using like a temperature since a lot of the values will come in in three digits, this will allow it to show, you know, 78.2 on screen, even though coming across is 780 or 782. Another part's nice. And then you can see here, I believe you can, let's see, uh, sometimes you can put text behind it. You do have the option. So this is another thing here, this read only. Make sure to uncheck it if you want to uh, change the value with the virtual keypad. Uh, if not, you're just only retaining the values coming in, you can leave that check. Oh yeah, text after right here. So we can say, we can go ahead and click this button here. Say we want to do degree Celsius. So we can do this degree and then we can put the C on there. Go ahead and click off of it and it will show up here. And then you can, you know, go back here and just say, okay, well, do we want it underlined? 
can go back and format it, see if it's actually we'd go here under the font properties and we don't select that for underlying and then that would come in like that. And the same idea, you play around with where you want to put it and go and select it here and you'll see how this stuff will all move around with the values and same idea you do have. And so what's nice here is you can set up a minimum value and a maximum value. Say we only want to see values from one to say 150. So the minimum would be zero, maximum be 150 and that'll go ahead and keep that range within those values. Anything outside of that, you might get a weird value or something that says does not work in that case. So, and then for our images, I will go ahead and show you binary image. So with this, you can set images for the off position or the on position. So you would go ahead and select this image binary collection, three dots right here, prompted with our image for on and off state. Select the three buttons to the right. And if for some reason this screen doesn't pop up, the Unistream Unipic folder, you'd have to scroll up uh, to see the Unilogic symbol right here. Open this guy, you'll see Unipix, and then go ahead and navigate. So we're going to go ahead and show you a light. So in the off position, it's going to be this guy right here where it's gray. And then in the on position, I'll select the green light. So that sets that up right there. Make sure to link your tags, anything in red. Always make sure you set something up for it. You can enter in a description. You can say on and off light. Just helps easier for reference for maybe someone who might not know what it pertains to. And then you can, you can definitely change the color when it's disabled. We'll go ahead and leave that alone. And you do have the option for messages, things like that, if you want to include those. So now I will go ahead and I'm going to create a button to jump in between the screens. And so that's the biggest thing is that, yes, you can have the multiple screens, but you do need to have a way to jump to them and back. So what I'll do here is I put on the screen a button I will change it to next page. And I will go ahead and select collection, three dots here under actions, and I will add a new action. So this time we're not gonna use a set bit. You go ahead and click on this field right here, and these will give you all the options you can choose from. So we're gonna go ahead and select load screen. It's gonna ask me for which screen. We don't have the new one in, so I'll go ahead and have to add that in. Right click on module one, select screen, Keep it as screen two. I'll go back to screen one, select this guy again. And now you see the screen two popped up here. So I'll go ahead and select that. Trigger is pressed, that's fine. And now we're all set to move on to the next screen. First thing I'll do is I'll make a button to go back just in case if somehow we don't like it. We need to get back to the main page. And you can name it whatever you want. I'm just gonna do back page for it. Go ahead and do that here under the text label field. And then once again, go back to your actions collections field here, select the three dots, add a new action. And this time it's not gonna be a load screen, but we're gonna use the last screen since we're going backwards. And we don't need to actually select our tag since it knows that there's only two. But I will go ahead and add in another screen. So that we have screen three. The nice thing about a lot of these, the copy, paste, cut, all this stuff works well with the Unistream. Right click on it, select copy, and go ahead and go to screen two, go ahead and paste, and there you go. It goes ahead and sets it up right there. You just gotta make sure you go back to here. And we're gonna say this time, go ahead and clear that out. You have the option of screen one, and go ahead and say screen three, and then we'll go ahead and copy back page go on to our next screen and paste it in here and then see it this time and then we can do the last screen or you can also do a load screen you can say well I want it to load screen too you, know, you can jump back and forth depending upon how you set it up what I like to show you here on the second screen I can show you the meters and the radio gauges things like that and then I'll go ahead and show you the transaptoid so everything is drag and drop you go ahead and select the meter go ahead and drag it here on this it comes in horizontal. You do have options to select which way you want the direction to go. It'd be right under here. You drop this down, say we want it to go in the up direction. Kind of looks a little bit different now. So what we're going to do is go ahead and scroll this down and then basically shift this over 
so that way you can see it kind of in a vertical position. You gotta make sure we link it to something uh, since it's giving us a row tag. You can see meter, and it's asking us also for a minimum value, zero, and we can do something like maybe 100. So then that will adjust accordingly with live data as it comes through to show you to you on the screen. You can change the field color, green, red, blue, whichever you desire. Same thing with the empty color as well. And so here I showed you a little bit earlier of a circular gauge, radial gauge. This is the default one. Um, you see how it goes from zero to 100. You can definitely set different options This style, under the style here. You have about 10 to 15 progressive. You can see how much it changed. It gave you all this stuff here as far as the different aesthetics. And so that part, the ranges, let's see. Oh, and so you can, you can change your value, say we want zero, say this wants to be 200. And the color will be green. That went ahead back. So it might be you have to do it here as well in the end value. Okay, and that finally updated. So yeah, it's, it's both, both two parts if you want. Um, most of it can be done from here. And then same thing, we have to link our tag. We can say radio gauge. And then that will plot the data depending upon this link right here with what's coming in, you know, either from a temperature sensor or current sensor once you've linearized everything to work in this range. Um, so it's very, very nice and convenient, very good aesthetics for visualization. And then, yeah, you have the option for horizontal tags. We can do tangent. And then how often do you want the intervals to be? Set these say maybe to 10, and you see the ticks. There's a little bit more of them, a little less, things like that. Let's go ahead and change this guy here, see what this does. Ooh, it gives us even more. That way, you can sit there from 0 to 20. Each takes two. So that way, you know, it just makes it a little bit more user friendly. All right, so now I'll go ahead and jump over to the third screen. I'm going to go ahead and put trend on screen and so you see how big the trend actually takes up so like on a five inch screen this is probably going to take up most of the screen seven and higher it's basically you probably still got about 40 percent left of the screen left to use so a lot of times this is going to be probably one screen on its own just so that way you're not over cluttering it and and things are clashing with the each other. Uh, what I mentioned earlier is that we will need to take a button. Go ahead and just do it. Drop it in right here. Go ahead and say it's a start slash end sampler. I will change the font properties so that way it can fit inside and then I will adjust flows. Go ahead and set that. Okay so before I can link my button to my data sampler I'll need to create a data sampler so go ahead to your Solution Explorer, select the data sampling tab here. We'll need to go ahead and select the green plus here for add a new data sampler. And the first thing you need to do is have a folder name for it um, for when. So this uses an SD card. So this is what uh, the folder name will reference and will store your files into on the controller. Uh, we can go ahead and change our interval time. I'm gonna say 10 seconds for this demo. Sample one is okay. You can change this name to anything you want as well. And so now I'm gonna create a couple tags. So I'll add two tags here. Uh, this first one here, this guy is going to be, I believe, oh uh, yeah, we're going to do TW value. And this will just be something that we'll reference in our ladder. I'll go ahead and create a tag for it. We're just going to say TW, TW1. That way it makes it easy just to reference the second key name. This is going to be seconds. And we will go ahead and reference the tag as seconds trend and create that tag as well. All right, now that that's set up, I can go ahead and go to my ladder and I'll go ahead and set up a couple basic functions. I'm going to be using two different type of subroutines. So I'll go ahead and add one here under the module two and go ahead and select the first one. So we're going to go ahead, use a direct contact, this to TW1. And actually we'll need to actually create this guy too real quick. I'm going to use a call function. So this is going to be here under calls. So go ahead and drag and drop this to that. So we're going to go ahead and select function two. All right, and for our next net, we're just going to use a store function that can be found under the basic elements. Go ahead and drag and drop that in here. We're going to go ahead and use the RTC time system tag. If you scroll down, you'll see RTC date and time. 
select the time and select the seconds and that'll link it to there and then we're going to link it to where is this going to read into this is going to be for our trend seconds trend and this function is all set now we're going to move on to the second function and go ahead and build a couple nets just so that way we can see some data on the screen with our trend we're going to take a positive transition contact and this is going to be linked uh, to a frequency bit so for system, select frequency. We're going to use a 100 millisecond bit. And then we're going to have a parallel statement. So we will start with a inverted contact on the top and then have a direct contact on the bottom. And we will link these to a new tag saying like reach 100. And go ahead and select the same bit here. And go ahead and select that line, get rid of it, because we want a parallel statement and we don't want it connecting back together. And so for the inverted contact, what we're going to do is we're going to set up an incrementer and link this to our TW1. And that's it for there. And then we'll do counting down our decrement and link it to the TW1. And that's all we need for that net. The second net, we're going to use a greater than or equal compare block. And we're going to link this top one to TW1. And this is going to be 100. And we will set, using a set coil, the reach 100. And then lastly, our last net, we're going to use a less than equal. Same idea, TW1. 100 and this will reset using a reset coil the reach 100 so basically what we're saying here is that if a tw1 goes over 100 set 100 that'll engage this guy here start going downward and then if we want to reset it it'll trigger this guy up here so in that way at least we can collect some data into our trend itself so we'll go back to screen three I'll now go ahead and link this, select the button, select the collection for the actions, add a new action, and we're gonna do a toggle bit. And now we're gonna select for the tag, data sampler one, and this start in sample. Go ahead and click close. And so now the fun part, now that this is all set up, I'm gonna go ahead and set our PC PLC communications. And I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can communicate with the controller I have since it's at a different IP. Okay, that's good. And go ahead and select the download, download all, and allow that to load. It takes anywhere from a couple minutes to maybe five, 10, depending upon how big your application is. And then once it does, oh, we got a couple of errors. So let's go ahead and see what these are. All right, so we're missing a couple tags here. We'll go ahead and have to set these. Okay, data sampler here. Go ahead and make sure you select data sampler one. Let's see what else we have. Meter one. Go ahead and collect this. All right, so it needs an action. Let's see. Oh, we set up an action. We're just going to showcase it. And what was the last one? We have the combo box. This guy right here. So we'll actually just go ahead and get rid of that for right now. And then we download to the controller. Okay, now that it has downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and open up a VNC viewer. Go ahead and connect to it. There we are there. So this is the actual VNC viewer live showing what we did. Basically, uh, we have this on and off. We can go ahead and trigger the light real quick. I actually go here to my global tags. Let's see, where's the light? Right there. And I can go ahead and put the new value on there. We'll go ahead and bring this back up. See how it turned on. So off is zero one's on this was our numeric value we're not reading any attempts but that's essentially what it would show you go ahead and select the next page we don't have any values for the meter that's why it's gray but essentially same thing here if we had something running live we could go ahead and show this moving up and down but i just wanted to show you live the trend so this is what i was getting at earlier so see it's blank right here it's not taking anything if I select run all the time, it doesn't do nothing. But the minute I select this button, you'll see this thing go ahead and sync, the status light on, and we can go ahead and change it from stop to run. And so, and that'll basically start plotting the data and start to see it here. It's a little bit of red, a little bit of this green starting to go. There it goes. And so that'll, that'll take in live data as it goes. And as long as you don't push this button again, um, it will continue to plot the data at the time interval that you have set. It can be set in the properties windows for how the x-axis interval that you want to use. And so, and then also it'll show you the next curve. This is just the graph for seconds as it's going up. The other guy still is down here, down on the bottom, because it's just 
going straight across. And then once I press this again, it'll synchronize, and then this will do nothing again. So it's very important you have this button here down at the bottom for the trends activated. That was one thing we found that needed to be resolved. And so that that's how if somehow anybody's coming across any trouble, that's part of what you need to include. So thank you very much.